Big bone for the puppies. Earlier this year, a farmer lost a cow. We live in farm country. And these guys are, these guys, these farms around here are pretty good. These guys are all like, they're good to their animals. They really are. And um, I'm out of breath because I just carried that big thing up the hill. Um, well, actually, move it the way. Yeah, so anyway, he was kind enough to give us this cow as a down payment on a dog to protect his other cows. And he'll be back three years from now to get his dog. Because these dogs, they grow massive, as you can, well, you can't really see because there's nothing to scale here. But that guy right there, Manny right there, he weighs about 140 pounds. Um, and he's small. He's small for this breed. That, that light fella right there, he'll be about that big, about 140 pounds. Understand, too, that Manny is, um, let's see, he'll be, he turned... He turned seven years old this year. Seven? I'm gonna work this out just a minute. Yes, seven years old. And um, he won't get any bigger than what he is right now. He might get a little fatter once I neuter him. But I'm not gonna neuter him for another three years because he's gonna be the daddy of all the puppies that come in the next little while. We only breed these dogs once a year. And we're never stuck with a puppy, ever. I was a little worried this time because that guy over there in that corner eating that whole chicken over there, his name is Aquila. And I was not about to let him go for less than $1,400 because he's worth more than that actually. And um, So the, the fellow that, that took Randall, he only wanted to pay 12. So Randall's, a, Randall's even smaller than Manny. He, he is small for his breed. I don't think he'll get any bigger than his mother, who's 120 pounds. But at 120 pounds, he'll crack open bones the size of baseball bats. And I'll show you, show you what they do. This is what they do. They crack them open like that, and they go at that marrow inside. Here's another one. And that's... They bit that bone open. It's crazy the power they have. Just just crazy. You can whack that bone all day against a rock with a hammer. Eventually it'll break. But these guys don't even go at it all day. They just grab a hold of the bone, crack it open, and start sucking the marrow out of it. I feed them really good, so they don't, they're not going crazy in here looking for food. They have lots of food. Wasti has been, um, she's been regurgitating her suppers to feed these guys. So that's why I brought this up, so that she'd have, see, she's telling them, get back, I've already fed you. But she needed, she needed food as well. I can't let her get too skinny, and she is getting skinny. Right now she probably weighs about actually 90 pounds. She's, she's a good 10, 20 pounds underweight, and that's because she has been regurgitating her food. So that little guy, his name is Onyx. And the one next to him is Braun. And the little guy that's up on top of the bone there is Randall. And this light colored one is Dragon. And of course that's Aquila. Over there was chicken. His mother gave him a whole chicken. I won't take it from him. He'll only eat what he can eat. He'll he'll overeat a little bit, but that's alright, it won't hurt him. And he'll leave the rest of that chicken sitting there and Wasty will go in and get it later. So our good friends over at Sorrel Horse, they plan on uh, coming and checking our puppies out soon. 
and they're going to bring some treats for them as well. We're looking forward to seeing you here, folks. They have an excellent farm. I've watched their videos. They they show you real farm life on those, in, in those videos. Like you get to see what it's like to be a, a, a livestock farmer. It's not an easy job, and you got to love animals to do it. To do it the right way, anyway. Factory farms are evil. That's just the way it is. I'm sorry. I, I have no. We get our all of our meat, both both the human beings that live on this property, and me and the nice lady that lives with us. We're both on. We're both omnivores. We both eat meat, as well as vegetables and anything else. And we get our meat from local sources. There's no hormones and over amounts of antibiotics and all that kind of stuff in the meat that we buy. Our dairy products come from dairy farms where they only have three or four cows. And um, <laughs> and the eggs, the same thing. Our eggs come from places that. Uh, there's not like a whole lot of chickens all packed in a little box. <coughs> That's pretty much all we really eat actually is we the odd duck, but mostly just beef and chicken for for meat. Now these dogs here, these these guys can eat anything except pork. Anything that moves except pork. Pork will make them sick. It's kind of like humans. It'll make you sick. A lot of pork farmers are going to be mad at me, but I really don't care. It's a fact, and everybody knows it. Somebody asked me about roadkill. Can I feed my Volga wolfhound roadkill? Well, yes, you can, and your Volga wolfhound will eat it. Here's the problem, though. Did that roadkill have a feast of rat poisoning or something like that before you gave it to your Volga wolf wolfhound? Because if that's the case, your Volga wolfhound's gonna get sick. Was that roadkill rabid? These are the questions. So if I mean, if you live in an area where there's, there's just no, there's no rabies around, or if it's a roadkill that doesn't get rabies, like deer, um, just just be careful with the deer because they carry ticks, right? If your dog is treated for ticks, you won't have to worry about that. So if you find a deer on the side of the road and your dog's already been treated for ticks, then go ahead. Put that deer in the back of your truck and bring that home. Guts and everything, they like it all. There's nothing, nothing on a deer they won't eat except for the antlers. <laughs> Which makes me laugh when I see those things in um, pet stores. Because I'm actually yet to see a dog that will actually eat antlers. It just, they, they grab it and they play with it a little bit and then they get bored of it. And you just paid $35 for a three inch chunk of antler. The, the, the prices of them are just ridiculous. It's crazy. Show them how you do it, Wes. Show you, show them how you do it. <laughs> So there you go, there's a wolf dog, and my hand is, I don't know, I'm about eight inches from her face while she's eating that raw meat. She's completely okay with me, see that? The bigger guy, the guy I get down in the other pen who weighs like pretty much 170 pounds right now, I can just take a bloody red hunk of meat right from him and he'll just let me have it. So will he. I don't even get to take it from him, I just reach for it and he drops it for me. <laughs> That's Bron there, the dark one, who just looked up at me. <laughs> they're quite vocal when they're they're gnawing away on a big bone like this. <laughs> the 
this is a little longer video than usual but it's a lot, a lot of entertaining things to be looking at in here right uh. it's pretty yummy right guys it's a good stuff ain't it onyx yes it is it's a good stuff onyx these two get into it all the time. That's Aquila and Braun. They're fighting over who's the most dominant. And there's no set, there's, there's nothing set at this point. It, it's one day, it's one of them, it's the next day, it's another one. So they're, they're kind of like just, they're, in, they're, they're into establishing their, their place in the pack right now. Aquila seems to be the more um, assertive one. But Braun is bigger, so. Aquila's longer and taller, but Braun outweighs him by, geez, two pounds anyway. And Braun won't take it from him. He just won't. He's got a bigger head, too, so that makes a difference. There's little Randall. He's such a good dog. That dog is so good. That farmer that's taking him is, is getting one hell of a dog. He is so smart. I only hope that he'll take him to... Uh, to formal training. Victor, did you hear that? Take this dog to formal training, man. He will blow people's minds. This is the dog that's in the movies. Or this is the dog that will come running to you and drag you off to the wall because little Billy fell in. Or this is the dog that will run back into the flaming building to grab the child that was still in. That's him right there. That guy right there. These dogs were originally designed, Volga Wolfhounds, not just wolf dogs, but Volga Wolfhounds specifically, were originally um, designed to, uh, design, I don't know what other word you can, selectively bred to um, be rescue animals. But because of the wolf content in them, the Red Cross won't let them on a rescue site. If you show up with a wolf dog, they leave. The Red Cross will leave, which I, I don't know what that, but that seems to me like it's just some kind of politics crap. Maybe the kennel clubs were involved. I don't know. Somebody was. It's a stupid idea because what takes eight hours for a Labrador retriever to dig through, my guys do it in five minutes. So when the Labrador retrievers are pulling dead bodies out from under crumbled buildings, my dogs could be pulling living people out from underneath crumbling buildings, crumbled buildings. The grandfather of these guys towed a Volkswagen Beetle solo. He tore two fire doors off the hinges to get to me. He didn't want me to leave him alone. He grabbed a Harley Davidson. He dragged it all over the inside of this fellow's uh, garage, ripped the tire right off of it. That was that guy's fault. He told me to leave him in there. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, he was okay with it, too, so that was okay. He, he admitted it was his fault, and he should have listened to me. Man, he's come over for some attention. So this is a 13-minute video so far. It's a pretty long one, so I'm going to stop it right here. Say bye, Manny. Say bye, Manny.